King Ashoka, change of heart. After Ashoka became the emperor, he launched brutal assaults to expand his empire, which lasted for around eight years. Although the Maurya Empire that he inherited was quite sizable, he expanded the borders exponentially. His kingdom stretched from Iran-Afghanistan borders in the west to Burma in the east. He annexed the whole of southern India except Ceylon, modern-day Sri Lanka. The only kingdom outside his grasp was Kalinga which is the modern-day Orissa. The Battle of Kalinga and Submission to Buddhism Ashoka launched an assault to conquer Kalinga during 265 BC and the Battle of Kalinga became a turning point in his life. Ashoka personally led the conquest and secured victory. On his orders, the whole of province was plundered, cities were destroyed and thousands of people were killed. The morning after the victory he went out to survey the states of things and encountered nothing except burnt houses and scattered corpses. Having brought face to face with the consequences of war, for the first time he felt overwhelmed with the brutality of his actions. He saw flashes of the destruction that his conquest had wrought even after returning to Pataliputra. He experienced an utter crisis of faith during this period and sought penance for his past deeds. He vowed never to practice violence again and devoted himself completely to Buddhism. He followed the directives of Brahmin Buddhist gurus Radha Swami and Manjushri and started propagating Buddhist principles throughout his kingdom. Thus Chandashoka morphed into Dharmashoka or the pious Ashoka. Ahsoka's reign saw introduction of a large number of benevolent policies as compared to his predecessors. He adopted a paternalistic view on administration and proclaimed all men are my children, as evident from the Kalinga Edict. He also expressed his indebtedness to his subjects for bestowing with their love and respect, and that he considered it his duty to serve for their greater good. Ashoka's Edicts 1. No living being were to be slaughtered or sacrificed. 2. Medical care for human as well as animals throughout his empire. 3. Monks to tour the empire every five years teaching the principles of Dharma to the common people. 4. One should always respect one's parents, priests and monks. 5. Prisoners to be treated humanely. 6. He encouraged his subjects to report to him their concerns regarding the welfare of the administration at all times no matter where he is or what he is doing. 7. He welcomed all religions as they desire self-control and purity of heart. 8. He encouraged his subjects to give to monks, Brahmins and to the needy. 9. Reverence for the Dharma and a proper attitude towards teachers was considered better than marriage or other worldly celebrations, by the emperor. 10. Emperor surmised that glory and fame count for nothing if people do not respect the Dharma. 11. He considered giving the Dharma to others as the best gift anyone can have. 12. Whoever praises his own religion, due to excessive devotion, and condemns others with the thought let me glorify my own religion, only harms his own religion. Therefore contact, between religions, is good. 13. Ashoka preached that conquest by the Dhamma is superior to conquest by force but if conquest by force is carried out, it should be forbearance and light punishment. 14. The 14 edicts were written so that people might act in accordance with them. He got these 14 edicts engraved in stone pillars and slabs and had them placed at strategic places around his kingdom.